Welcome to lesson six. In this lesson, we're going to continue with chapter two of the course textbook Beyond the Basic Stuff with Python, which again, you can read for free online at inventwithpython.com slash beyond. Now in this lesson, we're going to go more into depth with the command line. I'm here on Windows, so I'm gonna start a command line prompt by clicking on the start menu and typing command prompt. And that will come up with our terminal window. This is also called a shell or a command line or a command line interface. There's a lot of different terms for this. This is kind of boring. So what I'm gonna do is just click on the icon and go to properties. And then I'm gonna change the screen text to a cool hacker color, like something like this bright green. So it looks like I'm in the matrix. And that just makes me feel a little bit better about using the command line. Let's go into some of these commands. Right now, you can see I'm in the users slash al folder. This is my home folder. And I can use the cd command to change the directory, my current working directory. Let's say I want to go into the desktop folder, which is in the al folder. And now I'm here, and then I could do cd dot dot. Remember, dot dot is the special name folder for the parent directory. So I'm going to go into desktops parent directory, which is al. So when I run that, I'm back here. And the other special named folder was just the dot folder, which means this folder. So if I change directory to this folder, you can see that doesn't change anything at all. Now cd is the command, and this part that comes after it is called a command line argument. It usually specifies some additional information to the command to do something specific. In this case, it tells the cd command what directory I want to go into. Usually command line arguments are separated by spaces. So let me go back to the desktop folder where I have a folder called vacation photos. But as you can see, this folder name, this is just one folder. It just happens to have a space in it. But the command line is going to interpret this as two separate arguments. So if you ever have a space that you want to be counted as part of the argument, you can put this inside of double quotes right there. And now I'm going to go up two parent folders. So I want to go to dot dot slash dot dot. This means I want to move to the parent folder of the parent folder of the current folder. And that puts me back at users slash al. Now the cd command is the same on Windows and Mac OS and Linux. Here I have Linux running. I can move into the desktop folder. The only change really is that the separator slash for, for folders on Mac OS and Linux is the forward slash, whereas on Windows, it's the backslash. But for modern Windows operating systems, you can also use the forward slash and Windows will know what you mean. Now probably the most important command line argument that you'll ever need to know about is how to get help about a command. Most commands by convention on Windows have a command line argument uh, forward slash question mark which will display the help information for that command. Usually it's way more information than you would ever need to know. But this is how you can get information about a particular command. Now on macOS and Linux, the help command line argument is usually dash dash help. And again, this gives you a lot of information. And you can also run programs from the command line. For example, for on, Win on Windows, I can run calc.exe. There's a file on my computer named calc.exe. On Windows, the .exe extension means that this is a program that you can run by typing its name in. So I'll just run the calculator, and that opens up the calculator. Now there is a slight difference between commands and programs. A program is considered something that exists inside of a file, and usually when you run it, it comes up with its graphical user interface, just like this calculator has. Whereas a command is usually a small program that just runs 
in the command line window itself. For example, I can run the dir command, which displays the contents of the current working directory on Mac OS and Linux. This is the ls command. But this shows me all of the folders and files that are in my home folder. On Linux, it's the, and Mac OS, it's the ls command. And the ls command also has the dash a command line argument to display all of the files, including hidden ones that begin with the period. This is another convention with command lines is that files that begin with a period are often hidden by default, usually because they are just configuration files that you don't need to know about. This is a convention that's on Mac and Linux and also Windows as well. And then there's also the L command line argument and we can use the L command line argument and the A command line argument combined together on Mac OS and Linux. And this will list out a lot more information. I'll be going into this later, but there's information such as how many, the file size in bytes, a timestamp for this file or folder, the user permissions and everything. This is a lot of information. We'll cover it later in a future lesson. But these are commands. All of their output is in the terminal window, and some commands aren't even separate program files. Some of them are built into the actual terminal window or the command line window itself. For example, cd, there is no cd.exe file anywhere on my computer. This is just a command that's built into the command prompt. Same thing for the shell in Mac OS and Linux. And the same thing with the uh, dir command as well. So the difference between what is a command and what is a program is not really all that important. You can just consider any sort of command line interface program. You can call that a command and people will generally agree with you. Now you're probably used to running your Python programs directly from your IDE or your code editor, uh, such as PyCharm or Visual Studio Code or Idle but you can also run your Python programs from the command line itself. Here on Windows, I can run python.exe, and normally when I run this, it just starts up the interactive shell, and I can run my Python instructions directly from this interactive shell. And if I want to quit from the terminal, I can hit Control Z and press Enter. Now on Mac OS and Linux, it's slightly different. Python is the program for Python 2 on Mac OS and Linux. And if I wanted to run Python 3, I need to run Python 3. And similarly, this will open up the interactive shell in the command line window. And I can play around with Python instructions here. Now on Mac OS and Linux, in order to quit, you want to hit Control D. Well, let's go back to Windows. Now, if you want to run a Python program, you can just run python.exe and then follow it up with the name of the program. I have a hello.py file inside users slash al and I can run that and it executes the code in that file. So hello.py, this is the file name. It is a command line argument to python.exe. Another thing, this is Windows specific, but the .exe part for programs is also optional, so I could just say python space hello.py, and that does the same thing. Now one nice thing about Python's interactive shell, if I run this here inside the terminal window, is that there is a function called help, and you can pass other function names or other module names to it, and it'll display the uh, doc string, the documentation string for that function or module or whatever on the screen. I'm going to exit out of the interactive shell and go back. Oops, I forgot I'm on Windows. It's Control Z on Windows and Control D on Mac OS and Linux. But there is also a way to run a single Python instruction from the terminal. You notice whenever the prompt right here is the chevron prompt, the triple angle brackets, then I'm inside the Python interactive shell. And here, I'm just in the normal command line for the Windows operating system. 
But if I don't want to go through the hassle of running the interactive shell and then quitting out of the interactive shell, if I just have one small instruction that I want to run, I can use the dash C command line argument and then pass another command line argument, which is just a string of Python code. And the dash C command line argument runs the Python code directly here from the Windows command line. And this works on Mac OS and Linux as well. I would just want to run Python 3 dash C and then the Python instruction. Now this is very useful if you just want to quickly run some Python code. Sometimes I'll use this as a calculator. And while Python has several command line arguments, I'm going to display that right here using that slash question mark on Windows or dash dash help on Mac OS and Linux. Uh, the dash C command line argument is really the, the most common one that I use. Now this next trick is Windows only. Whenever you install Python on Windows, you also get this py.exe uh, program, which you can just run with py. And this is sort of a shortcut for Python. But not only that, if you have multiple versions of Python installed on your computer, py will always run the latest version of Python that you have installed. Right now, I have Python 3.9 installed. In fact, I could just run py to start up the interactive shell. You can see it's Python 3.9. Point one on my system. Oops, <laughs> Control Z again. Control Z on Windows, Control D on Mac OS and Linux. But the nice thing about Pi is that you can also specify different versions of Python that you happen to have installed on your computer. So if I wanted to run hello.py with version 3.8, I can just supply a command line argument dash 3.8, and then the command line arguments that I would normally just uh, pass to python.exe. Or if I say I wanted to run Python 2 code, I could run this with Python 2.7. Or if I say I had Python 2.6 and 2.7 installed, I could just run it with the latest version of Python 2, which is 2.7 on my computer. We can confirm that just by running pi-2, and you can see it fires up the interactive shell with Python 2.7.14. Now this is really handy if you're writing code and you want to test it with different versions of Python to make sure that it works on all those different versions. Or it's just nicer to just type pi instead of the entire word Python out on Windows. Now in the next lesson, I'm going to show you some more tricks beyond just changing the text to green that will make you more proficient in using the command line interface. And then in the lesson after that, I'm going to go through some of the more common commands that you'll be using in the command line.